I'm Bob Burns with uh, Kaiser Compressors and we're going to talk about um, variable frequency drive uses in compressors. Um, to start out with probably it's a good idea to maybe mention what the four types of compressor controls are uh, briefly. Uh, some of you may know this and some of you have just found a comfortable chair to sit in might find it interesting. The first is an on and off compressor uh, similar to what you'd have in a garage or a piston compressor. On when it's needed, turns off when there's no demand. The second type is a modulating compressor. Uh, there the motor runs all the time and when there's no demand you bleed off the air to atmosphere. Uh, very good for instant response, not so good in terms of energy cost because you're running a motor continually. Uh, the third type is a, uh, a dual control. Like the on and off, it comes on when there's demand, but when the demand goes away, instead of turning it off, it idles. Uh, I like to use the, exp the, the, the analogy that it's like driving your car from 30 to 60 instead of 0 to 60, much more energy efficient, uh, less uh, wear on all the components and so forth. And dual compressors have been around for a while, very popular. And about 10, 12 years ago, variable frequency drive compressors kind of came on the scene as the cost of energy started to rise. The modulating compressor uh, was very popular uh, when energy was two cents a kilowatt. Now that it's 10 to 19 cents a kilowatt in Southern California, uh, a variable frequency drive can offer a lot of relief. So we'll talk about the, the, some of the proper applications, a little bit about variable frequency drives. Most compressor systems waste a lot of energy. In small to medium sized facilities, maybe 15% of the compressed air usage is wasted. In large facilities with multiple compressors, uh, that can be as high as 30 to 60% of wasted energy. Um, sometimes it's a compressor that's way oversized, very often. Other times it's just misused. A variable frequency drive does several things in order to save energy. It, it, it matches the power, or, or maybe a better way to look at it is it matches supply to demand. Uh, as opposed to having too much supply and not enough demand, you now match those two. It minimizes inrush uh, standing current. Um, it's near perfect motor factor, uh, motor power factor, uh, because you're constantly matching, you're going through capacitors and matching the incoming energy to the energy needed to run the motor. You regulate the workflow and you decrease the flow of product or uh, mixture uh, by controlling your air usage very closely. So to elaborate on that a little bit, when we, we match the power to demand or, or supply to demand by using only the energy needed to turn the motor. We stabilize the system pressure at plus or minus two PSI. Uh, and by doing that, we're never supplying more air than we need and the curve stays similar. There's a chart that we'll show you in a moment. We minimize or eliminate the idle consumption. In the dual compressor, we have idle periods where we're running at partial power. Uh, this never has that situation. You, you're constantly matching supply with demand. You have no inrush current spike since all of your current coming in is going through the, uh, the variable frequency drive. You have near unity in the power factor. Any losses through the motor are automatically uh, held by the capacitors, so you don't have any, any power, uh, power loss. And the fact that you're not turning a machine on and off, uh, I think it's pretty simple to see that you'd have a very uh, much longer air and air uh, end and bearing life, gear life. All of the components work a lot less hard. It's a very smooth operation. We regulate the workflow uh, at the compressor and we decrease the, the flow of product or mixture uh, if we're using uh, exactly the amount of air at, at each component. Uh, by regulating it down, uh, we're, we're getting the most efficiency. And you get a pretty fast return on investment if you're using a lot of energy and you're running a lot of hours particularly. Uh, you can run a test and see how much am I going to save? Does that justify the additional cost of a variable frequency drive? So in our example here, this is a modulating control compressor. Very, very common. There's a lot of these in the field. So what you have is, this is the, the demand. This is how much air we're actually using. And our motor is running up here. 
tops out for periods of time and drops down. So this is the air we're supplying. This is the air we're actually using. All of this is waste. With the variable frequency drive, this is the same usage pattern. But here, we're using our, our flow and our supply are the same. Careful, keeps it within two PSI, plus or minus two PSI. So, as you can see, this is a, a lot of waste. Here's our volume here, using less than 200 CFM, but we have the potential for 500 CFM. But there are times when we need that 500 PSA, PSA. We have, in fact, we go up to 650. So you can see the variable frequency drive. If this is a 24-hour day, as you're seeing here, that's a lot of energy savings. And you multiply that out, and it starts to add up very, very quickly. When we start the different motors and compressors, a direct compressor starting is direct online, as you, as you probably know. When you start a motor, a lot of inrush current, uh, and then, um, then it drops back down to the operating range here. With a Y delta start, which is uh, a lot more efficient, you jump up and then uh, you come back to a low range, then your second set section kicks in, and then you reach your, your, your state here. With a variable frequency drive, you just go very smoothly right up to your operating, uh, uh, operating uh, electrical requirements, your operating power. So with a variable frequency drive, we match the input power with whatever the demand is. We, we keep a very fine pressure band, plus or minus two PSI. Uh, that's probably the most significant factor. Minimum on load time. This comes up very, very rapidly. When, when, as your demand comes up, you get a signal from the tank. As your demand comes up, uh, that motor ramps up very, very quickly. And obviously a very low uh, starting inrush current, you only start the machine once. It runs the rest of the day. Uh, we talked about the power factor, uh, and obviously longer motor life, longer air end life. It's a uh, um, very simple if you're not turning a machine on and off. It's like driving the freeway versus stopping for a lot of red lights, much easier on equipment. A very fast return on investment. A, a variable frequency drive machine typically across most product lines, it'll vary by size. Uh, but it's usually a 25 to 35 percent premium cost in a new piece of equipment. So you really have to justify that cost. If I'm paying 30 percent more and I'm saving 2 percent a year, probably not worth your money. Uh, if you're running a lot of hours, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week in many cases, and you have a lot of fluctuations, you use a lot of energy on first shift, maybe half of that on second shift, and a half of that again on third shift, a variable frequency drive almost always returns an investment within about 18 months. Pretty impressive. The way it works is you have a, a master controller, a, uh, in this case it's a Siemens uh, a master controller. They meet US, UL standards, of course, and it's an oversized controller so that you have any electrical inrush, uh, you're more than adequate. It improves the power factor to 99%. Uh, the power factor uh, kind of simply is when you, instantaneous power is achieved by multiplying uh, voltage times current. However, in the real life, motor windings will, will, will take time with the current and you'll lose some incoming power. So you actually need more to, to make it work. With a variable frequency drive, you don't. It matches everything prior to going to the motor windings. Obviously, they have a soft start. They don't start with full voltage. Um, and if there's unlimited starts uh, per hour. Uh, if you were to turn the machine on and off, if it runs down to its very low end, back to its, it doesn't really matter. They're most efficient within 20 to 85% of their, their, their uh, uh, volume range, which you can go up to uh, 100% uh, for long periods of time. Uh, when you go down below the minimum on a variable frequency drive, uh, you can create a heating situation. You really want to try to not oversize a variable frequency drive. There's uh, protection from phase loss, uh, incorrect direction of rotation, 
Uh, if the machine uh, stops because of a power outage, it automatically restarts. It has line reactors inside. Um, these are the kind of things you want to look for in a variable frequency drive. And the parameters are preset at the factory. It's not something anybody can really tinker with in, in the field. Two things that we usually don't tell you are that they don't like a lot of dust and they don't like a lot of moisture. So in Southern California where we tend to put compressors outdoors, you really need to make sure a variable frequency drive machine is covered, uh, that it's not in uh, direct uh, rain. Uh, and if it's in a place where there's a lot of, um, a lot of dust, you want to get a pre-filtered door to make sure you keep some of the dust out of a variable frequency drive. Um, these components are, are, uh, uh, are very durable, but also very sensitive to moisture and dust. How does pulse width modulation work? I'll attempt to explain this. The way the variable frequency drive works is you have your incoming power, which goes into an AC-DC converter. And it converts that power to DC. And when it's in DC, then we can regulate the, uh, the, the frequency. Our normal frequency in the United States is 60 hertz, so this allows you to take it down as low as 15. When you lower the frequency, you lower the speed of the motor. So we go from here into a DC-AC converter, and we go back in, and that's how we control our AC motor. So you have a standard AC motor, standard AC power current, and you convert it to DC. And there's some other explanations on here. I won't read this to you, but uh, in how this actually works. In terms of uh, how the electrical phasing works, okay. you can vary this you can vary this sine wave in order to change the, the uh, speed of the motor. So, so coming in AC, convert it to DC, control the speed of the motor, and we control, and that all takes place uh, within the pulses of the DC power before it goes to the AC motor. Variable frequency drives are certainly not new. They've been around for years in a lot of industries. Refrigerated compressors have used them for years. Fluid pumps, conveyors, HVAC. A lot of CNC machines uh, use variable frequency drives, mixers, generators. Uh, they become popular in compressors because the compressor is usually the piece of equipment in most factories that uses the most air. Uh, it's the biggest energy user in most facilities. And so if you... Well, many of the uh, Edison and uh, locally and many of the other power companies offer rebates if you replace an inefficient compressor with a more efficient compressor. They calculate out what your savings might be and they formulate a rebate based on nine cents a kilowatt saved in the first year. Uh, if you have a 150, 200 horsepower compressor that runs a lot of hours, um, you know, there's sometimes eight, 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars in energy savings available in addition to the savings that you enjoy for the life of the compressor. The proper application of a variable frequency drive in compressors is as a part load compressor. If you're running a compressor full out all day long, you don't want a variable frequency drive. You're wasting your money. It really operates best on part load, where it's operating in a 40 to 80, 85% range. Actually, it's 20% to 85% range. That's really when it's, it's tracking, if you remember that chart before, where it's matching supply with demand. That's when it's most efficient. Narrow pressure band. The variable frequency drive in a multiple compressor system will be the first on, last off, and it should be the largest compressor. Starts off and runs. When it reaches its maximum, when it goes over 85% and it starts to get to 100% loaded, the second machine turns on, and then this backs up and trims. Same efficiency before. You're matching the demand with the supply. If there are large load patterns, uh, uh, variations with no pattern, uh, some companies run 
uh, certain operations, sandblasting for example, intermittently. So sometimes they need a lot of air, but not all the time. A variable frequency drive lets you meet that increased demand, but pay for the machine uh, supply, again, matching demand when you need it most of the time. So you can ramp up very quickly uh, when you have a variable frequency drive to cover non-patterned events. Uh, in, the, in terms of uh, uh, shift work, if you've got two different shifts, and, and as I mentioned earlier, and one uses a lot less equipment than the other one, variable frequency drive can be the best solution for both. If you have high power cost, a variable frequency drive is certainly a very big consideration. I don't know very many places where there's low power cost today. Uh, there are a few, but you're smiling, so. <laughs> Areas with rebates, uh, this is certainly one of them, and I would, I would say all across California, uh, there are rebate programs today, and many states outside of California uh, have rebate programs. So uh, before anybody buys a variable frequency drive, I would suggest that you get with your local power representative, tell them what you're thinking about, and uh, they'll walk you through the guidelines of how to qualify for a rebate. Uh, what you hate to do is buy a variable frequency drive and find out, oh, I could have gotten seven, eight, ten thousand dollars from the utility company if I'd have only known. So, uh, kind of important. Some areas have a power penalty, uh, a power factor penalty. Um, what that means is sometimes in the middle of the day, if you spike up and use a lot of energy, that sets your rate for a while. So uh, a variable frequency drive will protect you from that situation. I think it's pretty common in Los Angeles, uh, where many areas where you set your rate uh, uh, regularly. So in looking at the real life savings, if we look at a typical compressor installation, over a 10-year period, 13% of the cost is what you paid for the compressor. 10% is what it costs to maintain it. And that number can vary, obviously, depending on how much the machines used over that period. And 70%, 77% of the cost is energy. So this price, I can tell you, continues to go up. This price continues to go up. And this price continues to go up. There's only one of them we can do something about, and that's the energy cost. A variable frequency drive in a good installation uh, can cut 22% off of that energy cost, and that savings goes back to your bottom line. Uh, it's 15? Uh, I think that's it. Any questions? No? Thank you very much.